This is MathHeals.com where you can find more links to math and computer science YouTube videos. And let's take a look at directional derivatives and gradients. And the idea behind this is is we've looked at finding the derivative with respect to x and respect to y, so looking in those two directions. But if you look at a specific point on your 3D shape, there's actually an infinite number of directions you can uh, you can study. And uh, that's what uh, this is referring to. How do you do that? Well, uh, this is how to find a directional derivative at a point in the direction of vector v. So again, the, the, point, the point is uh, where we're looking, and then the, the vector v uh, points us uh, which, which way we're studying. And again, there can be infinite number on this. Um, our first step is to find the unit vector of the given vector. And remember that's just uh, equal to v over the magnitude of v. Then we want to find the gradient. Uh, this is del. Uh, that del f is equal to the partial respect to x, i, plus the partial respect to y, j. Then we want to plug in our given point, and then we'll take the dot product of um, del f and uh, our unit vector. And that'll give us the, the value of that derivative. So let's take a look at a point here, or a point. Got a problem, and um, let me erase that. Try it again. There we go. And take a look at our first problem. F of xy is equal to 5x plus 2xy minus 3y and we're wondering at the point 3, 5 in the direction of v. So 4 fifths i plus 3 fifths j. And uh, instructions find directional derivatives, so we'll go back to our steps here. Our first step is we need to find a unit vector. Well, the unit vector, I'm going to go through the, the steps for this, but this is actually already a unit vector. Um, I, I can tell because of the 4 fifths and the 3 fifths. But um, these steps will work on all of them, even if they're already a unit vector. So we take 4 fifths i plus 3 fifths j. Actually, let me write the formula down first. Okay, so this is going to be v over the magnitude of v. So we're going to have 4 fifths i plus 3 fifths j over the square root of 4 fifths squared plus 3 fifths squared. So that's going to give us 4 fifths i plus 3 fifths j over the square root. Uh, 4 fifths uh, squared is 16 20 fifths plus 3 fifths squared is 9 20 fifths. Which, six t these have the same denominator. 16 plus 9 gives us 25. 25 over 25 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. So that just gives us 4 fifths i plus 3 fifths j. Again, this was already a unit vector they gave us, but it'll still work. Um, then we want to find del f. which is going to equal my partial with respect to x, i, plus the partial with respect to y, j. It's just right here. Okay. Well, um, we're going to take the, the derivative of this, the partial derivative of this, uh, with respect to x. 
So we treat the y's like constants. Well, the derivative of 5x is 5. Um, the 2xy here, the 2 and the y, are, we consider those as constants. The derivative of x is 1. 1 times 2y gives us 2y. And this doesn't have an x in it at all, so that just drops away. i. Then the partial respect to y, well, the 5x drops away. Um, the derivative of y is 1, and the 2x is considered the constant part, so this will be 2x. Minus 3, the derivative of this respect to y, j. Okay. That's step 2. Now step 3 is to plug in our given point for x and y. So, del of, um, del f of 3, 5. We'll plug, this is x and this is y, so we're going to have uh, 5 plus 2 times 5, because that's our y, i, plus 2 times x, and x is 3, minus 3, j. Um, so that's going to give us 15i plus 2 times 3 is 6 minus 3 is 3j. Then step 4. Our directional derivative of f of uh, 3, 5 is going to equal to the um, dot product of del f of 3, 5 and um, u. Well, if I take, um, we just found step 3, this is 15i plus 3j dot product of, uh, what was it, 3 fifths i I can't remember. Three fifths, four fifths i. Plus three fifths j. That was our u from up above. Well, remember we multiplied together what's in front of our eyes. So I got 15 times four fifths plus. And multiply what's in front of our j's. So we've got 3 times 3 fifths. Well, that gives us 60 fifths plus 9 fifths, which gives us 69 fifths. And that's the value of the derivative at that point in that particular direction. And again, I you know I could I could pick any vector here. So there's an infinite number of possibilities um, depending upon which way we're pointing. Um, this is directional derivatives and gradients. So directional derivatives and gradients. Page zero one the PDF. There we go. Okay, let's take a look at another problem. We've got f of xy is equal to e to the 2x minus cosine y at the point 0 pi and uh, in the direction of 2i plus 4j. Now, this isn't a unit vector anymore, so step one will actually have some meaning in this, this problem. Go back to my steps. Our first step, find a unit vector. Unit vector is equal to uh, v over the magnitude of v. So I'm going to have 2i plus 4j over the square root of 2 squared plus 4 squared which gives us 2i plus 4j over 
uh, 4 plus 16, which gives us 2i plus 4j over the square root of 20, which gives us 2i plus 4j. 20 is 2 times 2 times 5, so this becomes 2 square root of 5, which gives us uh, 2 over 2 square root of 5i um, plus 4 over 2 square root of 5j, which gives us 1 over square root of 5i plus 2 over square root of 5j. Multiply top and bottom by the square root of 5, and we get square root of 5 over 5i plus 2 square root of 5 over 5j. And that's our unit vector. Grab a drink here. Okay, step two. We want to find del of del f, which um, let's see, it was step two, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Which would take partial respect to x i plus partial respect to y j. Okay. Well, we treat uh, for the partial respect to x, we treat the y's like a constant. So the negative cosine y's don't drop away. And derivative of e to the 2x is e to the 2x times the derivative of the power. Um, the derivative of the exponent is 2, i. Now the partial respect to y. The e to the 2x drops away because there is no y there. Minus, and uh, then the um, derivative of cosine is negative sine, j. Gives us 2e to the 2xi plus sine yj. And we're going to plug in our point. So del f of uh, 0 pi. Again, this is our x and this is our y. So we'll plug 0 in for the x. So I got 2e2 two times 0 i plus sine pi j. Well, 2 times 0 is 0. e to the 0 is 1. So this gives us 2i. And sine of pi. Uh, sine of pi is 0. So that drops away. Here's pi. And sine um, is your y, so here we got the point negative one zero, so that's y drops away. Well, our directional derivative of f of uh, zero pi, it's our last step here, is equal to del del f zero pi, or the dot product of del f zero pi and uh, the unit vector u. Well, this is 2i, so we got 2i, and then dot product of that, and square root of 5 over 5i plus 2 square root of 5 over 5j. Well, we multiply the what's before our i's together, so I got 2 square root of 5 over 5, um, 2 times square root of 5 over 5. And the j's, there's there's no j here, so it's by default 0, and 0 times anything drops away. So that's our answer. Let me save that. Look at our third example here. We've got f of x, y, z is going to equal to x squared, y, z to the third, and um, 
dealing with uh, 0 0.21, negative 4, and then, then this direction, 2, 3, 1. Same instructions. Find directional derivative of uh, the function of p in the direction of v. Now, in some of these, uh, it may give you the value of the derivatives. Remember, the derivative is the rate of change. So, if we're dealing with um, three dimensions, four dimensions, whatever, um, it may the rate of change may tell you like uh, heat dispersion or something like that. Let's go back to our steps. Still the same steps. Doesn't matter that we add another another um, variable in there. First step: find a unit vector. So. Our unit vector is going to equal to v over the magnitude of v, which is going to be 2, 3, 1, and then the square root of 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 1 squared, which is uh, 4 plus 9 plus 1. which um, gives us square root of 14, which gives us um, 2 over the square root of 14, 3 over the square root of 14, and 1 over the square root of 14. Multiply top and bottom by, uh, by the square root of 14, and we're going to get... Uh, ah. Two square root of fourteen over fourteen, three square root of fourteen over fourteen, and uh, square root of fourteen over fourteen, which gives us square root of fourteen over seven, three square root of fourteen over fourteen, and square root of fourteen over fourteen, and that's our unit vector. Well, our Second uh, step is to find del f of x, y, z. And that's going to be equal to our partial respect to x, i, plus partial respect to y, j, plus this par partial respect to z, k. Well, again, uh, when I'm taking the, the partial respect to x, I'm treating the y and z like constants. So they, don't, they remain as is. Can't, they don't disappear. The derivative of x squared is 2x, so this becomes 2x y z to the third i. Partial respect to y, the x and z are constants. The derivative of y is 1, so that gives me x squared z to the third j. Then the partial respect to z, the x and y are constants. Uh, the derivative of z to the third is 3z squared, so put 3 out in front. And I got z squared k. Step three, del f of um, our point, 2, 1, negative 4. So I'll plug this in for x, plug this in for y, and plug that in for z. And I'm going to have 2 times 2 times 1 times negative 4 to the third i plus 2 squared times z to the third, negative 4 to the third, j, plus 3 times 2 squared times 1 times negative 4 squared, k. 2 times 2 is 4, times 1 is 4, times um, negative 64, i, plus uh, 2 squared is 4 times negative 64j, plus uh, 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12, 12 times 16k, uh, negative 256i, uh, negative 256j, and where's my calculator? 
12 times 16. 192. Okay. And let me double check this. 2, 1, negative 4 to the third, so that's 4. Negative, negative 64. Yeah. Then uh, x squared is 4 times the z. Okay. Uh, 12 times 16. Okay, assuming no basic math errors, um, that's that. Now, our directional derivative of um, f of the our point, which, what is it? Um, 2, 1, negative 4 is going to equal to uh, the dot product of del, del f of 2, 1, negative 4, and our unit vector. So we're going to have negative 256i minus 256j plus 192k. Dot product of that and um, square root of 14, square root of 14 over 7. 3 square root of 14 over 14, and square root of 14 over 14. Now I realize that this different notation, this has i, j's, and k's, and this has the this notation, but still it's the exact same idea. So multiply together what's in front of our eyes. So I got negative, two, negative 256 square root of 14 over 7. So multiply these together. And then um, negative 256 times 3 square root of 14 over 14 and 192 square root of 14 over over 14 um okay that doesn't simplify any Though if I multiply the top part, the bottom, top and bottom by two, uh, I can get a common denominator. So that'll give me a negative 512 square root of 14 minus 256 times three. Um, let me use my calculator. I don't want to think that hard. 768. So minus 768 square root of 14 plus 192 square root of 14 all over 14. Um, okay, let me add these together. Plus 760, 768, 12 minus 192 gives us, assuming I typed it in in the calculator, negative 1,088 square root of 14 over 14. Um, this is negative 5, 4, 4, square root of 14, over 7, assuming I typed that incorrectly. And that would be your answer. Assuming no basic math error. That's my disclaimer on everything. <laughs> Okay, let's look at our next problem. These are kind of all the same. Just little little changes. Okay, this says find the directional derivative of the function and the direction of the unit vector u is equal to cosine uh, theta i plus sine theta j. x squared plus y to the third. Theta is equal to 3 pi over 4. Now our first step is to find a unit vector. Now here they're giving us a different formula. Since we're given theta, they're telling us to instead use this for your unit vector.
So then I just need to plug in my 3 pi over 4. So I've got cosine of 3 pi over 4i plus sine of 3 pi over 4j. Now uh, 3 pi over 4, if I look on my unit circle, here's 3 pi over 4 and our points are negative square root of 2 over 2 and positive square root of 2 over 2. Cosine is our x, so this becomes negative square root of 2 over 2i uh, plus sine, which is our y, which is square root of 2 over 2j. Now if I were to square these and add them together, I, I find this is in tru truly indeed our unit vector. Um, then we want to find del f of xy, and that's going to equal to our partial respect to x, i, plus our partial respect to y, j. Well, again, uh, taking a partial respect to x, the y is a, considered a constant, so this is going to drop away, and we got 2x, i, partial respect to y, the x is considered a constant, so that's going to drop away, and we got 3 y squared j. Now, um, when we um, we have this this angle here, um, what we can do is it gives us a unit vector, um, but there isn't any any specific point. Um, it says in this uh, this direction, which gives us will give us a unit unit vector. Um, but it doesn't say exactly what it's going to be. So uh, there is no point to plug in on this. So let's skip directly to step four. And our directional derivative of um, this is going to equal to uh, the dot product of del f and our unit vector. Okay, so we're going to have... 2xi plus 3y squared j and our unit vector like that. So again, we'll multiply together what's in front of our i's and uh, add, multiply together what's in front of our j's and add them together. So I got 2x times negative square root of 2 over 2 plus 3y squared times square root of 2 over 2. Um, I'll probably leave these separate in ter instead of merging them into a single fraction. So 2's will cancel, and I got negative square root of 2x plus 3 square root of 2 over 2y squared. Now, the neat part about this is, is uh, in that particular direction, um, we're, we're found something real generic. Um, we haven't plugged in our x, our point, uh, so we can plug any point in here. But it is geared specifically to this this direction. So it, we got an infinite number of answers. Whatever you would decide to put in for x and y. Now I could uh, I could even put in this x value and this y value. Um, if I wanted to, uh, but that's, that's not what they're wanting. I'm assuming that I read directions carefully. Oh, uh, well, I think I did. <laughs> Sometimes I miss things in the directions because I don't read them real carefully. There we go. Let me look before I erase that. Okay, find directional in the direction of the unit vector. Okay, yeah, I didn't say anything about that. Let's take a look at this one. So we're given uh, f of x y is equal to x e to the y, and we're given two points. And it says, find a directional derivative of the function at P in the direction of Q. Well, before we can find our unit vector, we need to find our um, V, which is going to be our, um, this is our initial side, 
our initial point. This is our terminal point. So you subtract your x parts. So I'm going to have 5 minus 2 and 3 minus 1. Subtract your y parts. Which means this is going to be uh, 3 and 2. So you have to find v first before you can dive into your steps here. So our unit vector is going to equal to v divided by the magnitude of v. So I'll have 3, 2, and then divided by the square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared. So I've got 3, 2, and that gives me 9 plus 4, which is square root of 13. So this is going to give me um, 3 over the square root of 13 and 2 over the square root of 13, which gives us... Um, 3 square root of 13 over 13, and 2 square root of 13 over 13 for our unit vector. Okay, so our second, we want to find del f of xy, which is again your partial, partial of x or taking the partial derivative with the partial derivative with respect to x, I'll learn to speak someday, i, plus the partial with respect to y, j. Well, respect to x, the, the e to the y, that's a constant. And derivative of x is 1, so that's 1 times e to the y. This gives you e to the y, i. Now, partial with respect to, uh, to y, the x is a constant. And derivative of e to the y is e to the y. So this is plus x e to the y, j. Then del, del f of um, 2, 1, because they're asking at the point p, we'll plug this in for x, plug this in for y. So we're going to have um, e to the first. i plus x, which is 2, then e to the first, j, which gives us ei plus 2ej. Then our directional derivative um, of f of uh, 2, 1 is going to equal to del, del f of 2, 1, the dot product of del f of 2, 1, and uh, our unit vector. So we're going to have um, EI plus 2EJ, and dot product that and uh, 3 square root of 13 over 13 and 2 square root of 13 over 13. Different notation, but I could equally get rid of these lessons and greater thans and put I's and J's on these. So we'll mul multiply what's in front of our I's, or yeah, in front of our I's. So we got uh, 3E square root of 13 over 13. Plus, multiply what's in front of our j's. 2 times 2 is 4. So 4e square root of 13 over 13. Well, they, um, we can combine these together now. 3 plus 4 is 7e square root of 13 over 13. And that's our answer. And let me save that. Let's look at our next problem. Now here they're just asking us to find a little piece of those steps we were doing. They just asked to find us to find a gradient. And we'll see um, the gradient can be used to, to find various information. And we'll look at one, one example in this lesson. Five x squared minus y to the third and at point three one. And um I put the formula down here again, even though we've been using it so much it probably you know it. <laughs> uh del f of XY is going to equal the partial respect to X I 
plus the um, partial respect to y j. So I take derivative of this uh, respect to x, partial derivative I should say. Uh, the y is a constant, so this drops away, and that gives us uh, 10x i plus, and then the partial with respect to y, the 5x squared drops away, and we got negative 3y squared j. And we're going to plug in our point, the x and y. So we'll plug in 3 for the x, i, minus 3 times y squared, y is 1, j. Which gives us 30i minus 3j. Take a look at our next one, number seven. And um, put it right to here, I guess. Get f of xy is equal to sine of x to the third minus y. 1, 2. So let's find a gradient of the function at the given point. So same instructions. Well, I want to find uh, del f, del f x, y. It's going to equal partial respect to x, i, plus partial respect to y, j. Well, the derivative of sine is cosine. And then what's inside the parentheses remains the same, times, and this is a chain rule, we're taking a partial respect to x, so um, we take the derivative of what's inside the parentheses with respect to x, which would be 3x squared. And that would be i. Then we'll take the partial respect to y. Well, the derivative of sine is cosine again. That doesn't change. Times, and then the partial of what's inside the parentheses with respect to y, which would be a negative 1 j, which gives us uh, 3x squared um, cosine of x to the third minus y i minus, that negative goes out in front, cosine of x to the third minus y j. Well, this is x and this is y, so let's plug that in. So we got uh, x, which is 1. Cosine of uh, 1 to the third minus 2 i minus cosine of um, x to the third, which is 1 to the third minus y, which is 2 j, which gives us um, 1 squared drops away, so we've got 3 cosine, and 1 to the third is 1 minus 2 is negative 1 i minus um, cosine of negative 1 j. Now, um, when we're talking about cosine, and we got cosine of 1, that actually doesn't give us anything, or cosine of negative 1, but cosine of negative 1 is the same as cosine of 1. So the only thing we uh, can do here Um, this becomes 3 cosine of 1 i minus cosine of 1 j. Trying to try to remember if the book puts that in decimal form or not. Um, I don't think it does. Looking at the, kind of looking it up real quick here. <laughs> no. I could factor out what they have in common. Um, that they both have a cosine of 1. Then that would give us 3i minus j. Like that. Either way, it's fine. Let's take a look at the next one. And I probably don't have room.
Okay. Number eight. F of x, y is equal to 5x minus y to the fourth minus 3 at the point. We got 2, 0, and 5, 1. It says use a gradient to find the directional derivative of the function at p in direction of q. Well, there, we're, this is the same as the earlier problems. Um, the implication is those first ones they have you using the, the lawn formula for. And I started doing that, and I thought, why am I doing this? Why don't I just use the, the shorter shorter formula? Well, remember, we need our our vector. Um, tell us what, what direction we're going, um, which is going to be our subtracting our x parts. So i got 5 minus 2, and subtracting our y parts. So i got 1 minus 0, which is going to give us 3, 1. So then our first step is we want to find a unit vector, which is v over the magnitude of v, which will be 3, 1 over the square root of 3 squared plus 1 squared, which is 3, 1 over the square root of 10, which gives us 3 over the square root of 10, 1 over the square root of 10. Multiply top and bottom by the square root of 10, and we get 3 square root of 10 over 10, and uh, 1 square root of 10, or just square root of 10 over 10. And uh, that's our unit vector. So then the second step is to find del f of xy, which is a partial respect to x i plus a partial respect to y j. Uh, spec to x, uh, the y of the 4 drops away, the negative 3 drops away, and the derivative of 5x is 5. So we've got 5i. Now with respect to y, the 5x drops away, uh, the derivative of negative y to the 4th is negative 4y to the 3rd, j. Then del f of, um, was the point at, at p. So plug in... 2, 0. This is our x and this is our y. Now we don't uh, have anything in this first one, so that just remains 5i minus 4 times y. That's too easy. Um, 0 to the third is 0 times 4 is 0 times j is 0, so that gives us 5i. Then our directional derivative of f of uh, 2, 0 is going to equal to del f 2, 0 the dot product of that, and our unit vector. So we're going to take 5i, dot product of it, and the 3 square root of 10 over 10, and square root of 10 over 10. Now this doesn't have any j, which means j is 0, so all we have to do is multiply what's in front of our eyes. So we've got 5 times 3 gives us 15, Square root of 10 over 10, which simplifies then. Um, those are both divisible by 5, so that gives us 3 square root of 10 over 2. And that's our value of the directional derivative at that point in that particular direction. What's a gradient used for? I mean, uh, uh, the directional derivative is kind of obvious. It tells you the rate of change at any particular point in any particular direction. Um, but the gra gradient, why, why did we uh, look at that? One of the purposes um, is uh, given with this example. It says find a gradient of the function and the maximum value of the directional derivative at the given point. Okay, so um, f of x, y, x squared minus y, 2y plus 3. 
This will give us a maximum value. The gradient uh, gives us the direction, uh, the max maximum value, or minimum value. Um, so first find a gradient of the function. Well, del f of x, y is equal to the partial with respect to x, i, plus the partial with respect to y, j. Now, with respect to x, um, I could write that function in this manner. Um, we got um, 1 over 2y plus 3 times x squared minus y. Um, I can split it up like that. In which case, if I'm taking a partial respect to x, then that's my constant proportion. So this is my constant portion. And then if I take a look at what's inside the parentheses here, the derivative, well, the negative y drops away, but derivative of x squared gives me 2x. So this becomes 2x over 2y plus 3i. Now, the partial respect to y is not so, not so easy. If I look at this, uh, we have y is in the numerator and y is in the denominator. So you can't split them apart like that. Uh, this would be my p, and this would be my q. I'd use a quotient rule. Talk about sloppy. Let's try that again. We need p prime, and we're, we're doing the partial with respect to y. So the x squared drops away, and the p prime would be negative 1. q prime would be, um, again, the partial with respect to y would be 2. So we've got p prime q minus p q prime over q squared. p prime was negative 1 times q, which was 2y plus 3, minus p, which was x squared minus y times q prime, which was 2, over q squared, so 2y plus 3 squared. So that gives us negative 2y minus 3, and we got a negative and a 2, so we got negative 2 times x squared gives us negative 2x squared, and negative 2 times negative y gives us a positive 2y. Over this, negative 2y plus 2y cancels, and we got negative 3 minus 2x squared over 2y plus 3 squared. So I mean I um, plugged everything in the correct place and simplified correctly. Let me double check everything. Uh, Q prime. Okay. Negative 2 plus 2y. Okay. So then this becomes negative 3 minus 2x squared over 2y plus 3 squared j. Okay. Well, del of f of 1, 2, del f 1, 2. Uh, plug this in for x, plug this in for y. So I got uh, 2 times 1 over 2 times 2 plus 3i plus negative 3 minus 2 times x squared, so 1 squared, over 2 times y, so 2 times 2 plus 3 squared j. Which gives us 2 over 2 squared, or 2 times 2 is 4 plus 3 is 7, so 2 sevenths i. Um, we got 1 squared, which is 1, negative 3, negative 2 is negative 5, over 2 times 2 is 4, plus 3 is 7, so 7 squared is 49j. Now, they're not asking us uh, specifically um, for it, but uh, again, that would that point, point in the direction. Um, the maximum value. It tells us the maximum value, we just take the magnitude of that. So the magnitude of uh, del del f one two is going to equal the square root of uh, two seven squared plus negative five forty ninths 
squared. Which gives us um, I'm going to multiply top and bo bottom by 7. So 7 times 2 is 14. 7 times 7 is 49. So this is 14 over 49 squared plus negative 5 over 49 squared. Which, uh, I can put those up. This would become 14 squared over 49 squared plus negative 5 squared over 49 squared. Which gives us, um, what is that, 256? Let me see. 14 squared, 196. Ah, that wasn't close. So 196 over 49 squared plus 25 over 49 squared. Now they have the same denominator, so I'll merge them together. 196 plus 25, let me see what that is. Uh, 196 plus 25. 221 over 49 squared. Now I can split this up, put a square root around the top and square root around the bottom. And by doing that, um, when you got a, your index matches the power you're raising to, they cancel each other out. So we're going to have square root of 221 over 49. And 221, I'm sure, pretty sure that doesn't break down exactly. Um, but is it divisible by anything? Uh, don't think so. So I think that's our answer. Not that comfortable with the square root of 221, but I don't want to spend a lot of time on it either. Because, as usual, I drank too much pop, so... <laughs> Okay, so this be number eight. There we go. And let's look at our last problem, which is good because my headset's hurting my ears here. I'm sure you want to hear me whine. Um X squared minus y squared plus 3z squared and 1 0 2 says so find the gradient uh, of the function uh, and the maximum value of the directional derivative at the given point well um, first off I guess I want to write this as uh, x squared minus y squared plus 3z squared to the 1 half power and um need to find a gradient. So del f x, y, z. This is going to equal the partial respect to x, i, plus the partial respect to y, j, plus the partial respect to z, k. Well, um, it's going to equal to... Uh, we got parentheses to a power. So the derivative of that, you take your power, put it out in front. What's inside your parentheses remains as is. You lower your power by 1. And then you multiply times the derivative of what's inside the parentheses. But we're taking the partial respect to x, so the y and the z portions will drop away. Because they're constants, considered constants. And the derivative of x squared is 2x. i plus 1 half x squared minus y squared plus 3z squared to the negative 1 half, same reasoning, times the derivative of what's inside the parentheses with respect to y. Well, the x squared drops away, the 3z, squ 3z squared drops away, and derivative of negative y squared is negative 2y. j plus 1 half x squared minus y squared plus 3z squared to the negative 1 half times the derivative of what's inside the parentheses with respect to z. We're taking partial respect to z, which uh, the derivative of the 3z squared is 6z. Okay. Which gives us uh, that 2 cancels that 2, 
Um, so we've got x over x squared minus y squared plus 3z squared to the positive 1 half i. So again, the, the 1 half times 2 cancels. The x we put up on top, and the negative 1 half we take up downstairs. Um, plus, minus, we've got a negative here. 1 half times 2 drops away, and we got y on top over the x squared minus y squared plus 3z squared to the 1 half j. And then uh, 1 half times 6 give us 3. 3z, I guess I should say, over um, the same thing. Okay. Well, uh, let's plug in um, 12, 13. This isn't going to come out nice. <laughs> let's plug in uh, the, our point now. This is our x, y, and z. And um, so then del f102, uh, uh, x is um, 1. So we'll have 1 over uh, 1 squared minus y squared, so 0 squared, plus 3 times 2 squared all to the one-half, minus y is zero, so we're going to have zero over something. I don't care what it is, because zero over that's going to disappear, j, plus z was two, so we got three times two over one squared minus zero squared plus three times two squared, all to the one-half power, k. Okay, so we're going to have del f 1, 0, 2, 1 over, that 0 squared drops away, 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12, plus 1 is 13, so we're going to, 13 to the 1 half is the square root of 13, i, plus 3 times 2 is 6, and this has to be square root of 13, too, because it's the same, k, and our j disappear, disappeared because of that 0. Um, so let's go ahead and, yeah, let's plug that in. Um, because our, we want to find our maximum value, <coughs> and that's the, um, magnitude of that. So the magnitude of that, we're going to have the square root of 1 over, square root of third, 1 the square root of 1 over square root of 13 squared plus 6 over square root of 13 squared. Which gives us 1 over 13 plus 36 over 13. Which gives us square root of um, 37 over 13. Split that up. Square root of 37 over square root of 13. Multiply top and bottom by the square root of 13. And top here I get square root of 37 times 13 over 13. And let me see what 37 times 13 is. 41. So square root of 41 over 13. And that's our maximum value of the directional derivative at that particular point. And... Uh, then again, the, the the gradient tells you in which direction it is. So let me save that. I think that was the last problem. Yeah, it was. Okay, so let me stop the uh, recorders.